أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليك يا إمام الصاحب العسر والزمان My dear brothers, sisters and highly respected elders السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And welcome back to our 11th lecture on the mystics of the prayer with our beloved Sayyid Muhammad Hashmi And just before, the begin, just before we begin, I'd like to request that we all recite Amma Yujibu five times for the Shafa of Sayyid Hazrat Hassanayn and all of those who are suffering from any sort of illness around the world, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma Yujibu al-Muqarra idha da'a wa yakshifu al-Sumur. Amma Yujibu al-Muqarra idha da'a wa yakshifu al-Sumur. Amma Yujibu al-Muqarra idha da'a wa yakshifu al-Sumur. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء بحق محمد وآل محمد May Allah give complete shifa to the mu'mini mu'mina suffering from any sort of illness and especially if our participants have any um, family members suffering from illness and especially Sayyid Hayd Hassanayn and without taking any more of your time I would like to welcome Sayyid Muhammad Hashmi to inshallah begin his lecture tonight أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وبائث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي القرشي العبد المؤيد الرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأراضين بأب القاسم مصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أعداء الله السلام عليك يا مولانا يا أمير المؤمنين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وآله الأطهار اللهم اجعلنا من خل السشيعة مولانا أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters uh, first of all this is the night that we commemorate the uh, martyrdom of Mawlana Amir al-Mu'mineen, peace be upon him. And uh, this is the night of sorrow and grief because, you know, on the, the, the uh, fajr of the day of 19 of holy month of Ramadan, when Ibn Muljam, la'annahullah, struck the head of Amir al-Mu'mineen, this was a voice in the heavens and the skies by angels, they said that تهدمت والله أركان الهدى By Allah, the pillars of guidance were all destroyed by what happened to Amir al muminin But what he said, he said فزت ورب الكعب This is a very bold statement for a human being. فزت ورب الكعب By the Lord of Kaab, I have succeeded. This is Amir al muminin a very great personality. It's not easy to understand Amir al muminin Even the greatest scholars, the great people, even those people, it's somehow impossible for them to know Amir al muminin and his all aspects. I'm just here uh, reading one part of the veil of Amir al muminin to Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. He said that my advice to you is to be conscious of Allah and steadfast in your religion. Do not yearn for the vault, hubbud dunya. Do not yearn for the vault. And do not be seduced by it because the vault is so seductive. Do not resent anything you have missed in it. And by it, he means at dunya. Inshallah, Allah. Gives us this, this tawfiq to be among the followers, real followers and true followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen. In the last session, we talked about, I'm just give you a summary from the beginning that we started to talk about the intention in Salat. We said that the intention connects our physicality to our spiritual vault. So every action of us can be valued by our intention. And then I said that intention has some several levels. The first level of intention 
is the intention that takes place in our mind for the ordinary people like me and maybe you. So I said for the beginners, for those people who just want to start moving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they need to purify their intention in their minds. Please, I want you to stick with the logic of this discussion. Please, it's so important. Stick with the logic of this discussion. And we said that the only way that we have to purify our intention in our mind, <coughs> sorry, it's thinking. We need to think. And I said, this thinking and this purification of intention in the mind, it requires two things. The first is knowledge. We need to be aware of the realities of this world, especially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reality of yourself, the human being. And the second most important thing was what? A dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as I said, we know many things, but we forget these things. We are neglectful. We are forgetful. And last night I said that this uh, consciousness, this being mindful, mindfulness, it's somehow more important than the knowledge. Knowledge is so important, but many of people have this knowledge, some levels of this knowledge, but their problem is what? Is remembrance, is a dhikr. Then I said, if we want to have this dhikr, we have a very big obstacle. Imam al-Khomeini states in the book, Adab al-Salat, the manners of prayer, he says that and in, in his another book, Chehel Hadith, the explanation of 40 Hadith, he says that the most important obstacle here, the most important stop here for the human being that refrains him from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Is hubbud dunya. Because when you love something, you think about that, that thing. Always you remember that thing. You're mindful of that thing. So as long as you love this dunya more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as long as you have this hubbu dunya in, in, in your heart, you cannot purify your intention. You do everything because you want to know that what will you get in return by doing that thing ver in this dunya. You always want to account anything in this dunya. So you need to eradicate the hubbu dunya, the love of dunya in your heart. Then we said that one of the best solutions for this problem is dhikrul maut. Dhikrul maut, the remembrance of death. Brothers and sisters, since we're not just, you know, talking some scientific discussion or, or some just some, some classes, this is, you know, reflection, not just teaching and studying. We have to feel these things. I'm going to reflect more and talk more about the dhikrul mot and inshallah then I will give you another practice and very, very important tip to be mindful of Allah in the whole hours and minutes of a day. The remembrance of death, it eradicates hubbut dunya. Why? Because it shows you that every th everything that you are connected to, everything that you like in this world, all of these things are mortals. They will not last forever. They will not last forever. And it's a very obvious reality. By the daily, on the daily basis, you see beloved ones, relatives, strangers are dying. Hundreds of thousands of people, they die every day. Now by having this pandemic, the number always increases, unfortunately. So this is very obvious, very obvious that we cannot rely on this world. And if we think that how big and how, you know, great the incident of Qiyam and the other world is, it would be, you know, another story. In Quran and in narrations, we 
learn about the stops of the day of judgment. We learn that on the day of judgment, we will face 50 stops. And in all those stops, there are some uh, agents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some angels, they are, they are accountants. They ask us, what have you done with this and that and this ni'mah and this blessing and this father and mother and teacher and all those things. It is narrated and we have in the Quran that every stop lasts for a thousand years. Subhanallah. Before hell and heaven, before, before you know, you, you're not sure where you're going to be and when you're going to reside. Hell or heaven, I don't know. This is just the accounting system. So it lasts 50,000 years on the day of judgment. This is just the process of distinguishing good from bad, evil from good people, good doers from wrong, wrong doers. 50,000 years on the day of judgment. There is a very beautiful narration, the Hadith al-Mi'raj. This is a part of Hadith al-Mi'raj that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks those people who are living in the paradise, ask them, if I can find the, uh, that part of this narration, ask them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what about dunya? Do you have any news from dunya? He asks those people who enter the paradise. They say, Ya Allah, la, he says, la ilma li bid dunya. I don't remember dunya. I don't know anything of dunya, the person says. The duration of this world is very much short. That cannot be remembered sometimes on the day of judgment. It's nothing. Can you remember five days before your uh, birthday when you reached your 10 years? Do you remember that? Do you remember that minutes of that day? You don't remember. No way to remember. Because that's a minute in my 30 years of life. It's nothing in my life. This is exactly the analogy of what? Of dunya in front of akhirah. This, this is nothing. So the question is, is it fair to be mindful of this dunya every moment, every day, every month, every year? And to just forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even on the Laylatul Qadr tonight. Even tonight some people fall asleep. What happens to you? Can't you understand the reality of this night? Aren't you in need for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So remembrance of the death is so important. And as long as we have this hubbud dunya, we cannot cross that very famous bridge, the bridge of Sirat. It's called Sirat on the Day of Judgment. It is a story that a person says that I was on the verge of death. This was the moment of ihtadar. People and my family and my relatives were gathering around me. And I was dying. This was just my last breath. And this person after that, he says that I, I, I recovered from that moment. But I remember that moment. In that moment, you know, it is recommended for the person who is going to die, who is dying, to do talqeen for him. The people around him must do talqeen for him. What is talqeen? Is to make him say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasul. Help him to say this, shahadatain. He said that the person who wanted to do talqeen on me and his, he asked me to say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, say Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. He says, in that moment, shaitan showed up. He could witness this thing in that moment. And I had a very beloved watch. I was wearing that watch everywhere. That was very beloved. I liked that watch too much. Shaitan took this watch in this hand and said, 
if you say ashhadu allah ilaha illallah i will destroy and break this watch and he says that i hesitated to say ashhadu allah ilaha illallah i couldn't say he says after i recovered from the death i broke that watch what is that hubb dunya not hubb the, the, the love of dollars or pounds no that the the love of a very tiny watch it's nothing even this thing prevents you from you know crossing those levels and th always there is a misunderstanding here please it doesn't mean that we need to go to the caves and live our daily life no a real muslim a true believer successful person in his society because what because of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not because he wants to be recognized by other people no no this is hubba dunya but i want to be the best person in my university why because i'm a muslim i'm manifesting what the believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there i'm a symbol of islam there so i need to try so hard to be the best person sometimes i need to be the wealthiest person but i am not connected to these things to my education to my friends to my job and if i like these things this is because of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i love my parents because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed me to to be so i love my wife my husband my children i love my friends because they are my friends and my relatives and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me to love them. A mu'min must love other mu'mineen. The greater the iman is, the belief is, the greater the love of the other persons in his heart is. So Amir al-Mu'mineen loves us much more than the amount and, 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 and then the love that we have for Amir al-Mu'mineen. So please and care about this misunderstanding so this was the this step and i recommended you to have this practice and inshallah we can start from now from tomorrow five minutes of remembrance of the death you know a time in a day morning noon night i don't know when five minutes and five minutes before you say allahu akbar in salat just recalling and remembering the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can do this, that the moment you start taking wudu and you there go to your sajada and start reciting iqama and adhan, it takes five minutes, five minutes. Just think about the existence that you are going to bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Five minutes, five minutes, it's all 10 minutes. We waste, you know, hundreds of minutes in social media, on Instagram, on YouTube, yes? So just 10 minutes. Inshallah, this will be a practice. We can start that from tomorrow. But the next topic that I'm going to talk about, inshallah, is somehow deeper than this. Someone may show up and say, and raise this question that it's not possible it's so hard my whole day i'm busy with other things and other people and other persons you say five minutes you know remembers of the death and five minutes preparedness for salat it's not too much i'm not gonna be successful on this this is a good argument and it's and, and this argument also have a solution. The scholars who teach akhlaq and great persons in mysticism and in akhlaq and irfan, great mujtahideen, scholars of Shia Islam, according to the narrations of Ahlul Bayt and according to Quran, they say that we have to have a process of mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the whole day. All hours that we are awake, we have to 
you know, go through this process. What is this process? So that discussion is closed now, five minutes, five minutes. I'm going to deepen this discussion, inshallah. They say that Salat, five times of Salat, is in your day, is in the time of your day. So if you can somehow manage this day to be a day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, absolutely and definitely your Salat will be for who? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is guaranteed that your intention will be purified. What is that process? This process that I call this the process of al-muraqibah, the process of observation. This process includes three parts. The first part is al-musharita. The second part is what? Is al-muraqibah. And the third part is al-muhasara. What, what are these three things? Al-musharita. Allama Taba Taba'i, he, you know, explains this three parts in various books, different books of him. And he has a very beautiful letter to a 20-year-old uh, uh, person who asks him for some guidance in Irfan. It's so beautiful, this letter, inshallah. Uh, I think there is no English translation for this letter, inshallah. Uh, I, with uh, Sayyid Ahfad, try to translate this uh, into English, inshallah, and uh, post it in the group, inshallah. He says that the first thing is the moment you wake up, Yes, the moment in the morning for the Salat al Fajr, you wake up. You need a preconditioning, al musharata. You decide to refrain from whatever that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes, that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at it. I decide from the beginning of my day, this is al musharata, to do so. Refrain from backbiting, refrain from uh, lustful looks, refrain from lying, refrain from any, 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 all these things that you are aware of. This is the first part. The second part is al muraqibah. You need to observe yourself. Like a, you have a bird eye, yes? You have a drone on yourself, and human being is able to do that. And you observe yourself from the beginning of the day until the night. All your actions, all the things you do and all things that you refrain from doing. And in all those actions, you try to be, you try to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is al-muraqibah. To observe yourself and your activities. And inshallah, in higher levels, your what? Your images in your mind, your thoughts. And then he says, the final part is what? Is al-muhasaba. What is al-muhasaba? It means self-accounting. He says, okay, the day is over and you're going to bed. Before you, you fall asleep, just for four or five minutes, sit down there and think about what you have done in this day. The wrong things, the right things. If you have done anything right, do shukr. Give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you saw that you have done, you know, wrong things, start repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after that, go to sleep. Is it hard? Is it a very, you know, weird sounding dhikr? From a book, you know, in some library, in some parts of Iraq or Egypt or somewhere else that teaches us the Irfan? No. No. Just try to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these three parts. And he has some recommendations here. I think we have time. We have about four minutes of time. But inshallah, I think I can... Uh, Let's read this letter, inshallah, next, next session, in the next session. I, I'm afraid that we can't finish this letter, and I want to do that and read this letter in, in, a, in a whole session. I don't want to cut it. If we do so, 
those great scholars of akhlaq say that you will start feeling the change in yourself and wallah is it is true it is true you will gradually you see that your salat your ziyarat your vacation your treatment with other people your behavior with your family everything is changing and it has some metaphysical effects and consequences like what inshallah inshallah someone will be successful to see in his dream you the, the dream starts to be you know to to change to become lighter to become more beautiful to become more meaningful inshallah i want to talk about dreams and ru'ya in a session but not, not this mistakes of prayer because of what because you are gradually purifying yourself they believe mirza jawad maliki tabizi imam al khomeini allama taba tabai imam khamenei they all say that all say that these great people these great personalities they felt much higher than these levels they say that it is guaranteed whoever whoever takes this path will be released from the hope of dunya and will be released from the sins and his salat will be different his fasting will be different everything will be different so inshallah next session i will talk about this letter of allah a young boy not boy young man a 20 year old man is asking allah please give me a recommendation i just I, I don't want just words and words be good be, be mindful have taqwa no 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 give me a recommendation that by that i can make sure that i will reach the levels allah Matawatawa gives this letter to him in which he talks about al musharata al muraqaba al muhasaba inshallah i will talk about this letter inshallah next night Tonight is Laylatul Qad, brothers and sisters. And do, as I said on the night, uh, the first night of Qadr, do not lose any moment. Even if you are exhausted, you're tired, and you want to lie down somewhere, no problem. Just think. Sayyid ibn Tawus, Mirza Jawad Maliki Tabrizi, they say that you need to have a separated time tonight for just thinking. And we know. What is what could be the material of this thinking? What remembrance of death, greatness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, dhikrul maut. So you don't need to all night go through the dua Joshan al kabir. That is very very good and highly recommended. But if you're tired, no problem. If you're not doing anything, you can think. It doesn't tire you. Inshallah, don't lose the blessings of this night which for here is now happening inshallah for you will begin in some hours or some minutes inshallah and don't forget me on this blessed night on the uh, for the last word again let's go to amir al mu'minin and say salawat and salam upon maulana and sayyidina amir al mu'min allahumma صل على مولانا أمير المؤمنين قائد الغر المحجلين يعسوب الدين أب السبتين بعل الزهراء عليه السلام اللهم اجعلنا من خل سشيعته وأخبته اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And thank you so much for that incredible lecture. EMs, you could say. But of our 11th lecture, I request you to remember us and your duas tonight. And wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi.